Yeah, I think fear is one of the greatest hindrances to passing the Motorcycle Safety Foundation basic rider course. So this video is for new riders. I'm talking so new here that you've not even taken your first step and enrolled in a basic rider course yet. So consider this your cheat sheet on how to be successful on the MSF's basic rider course. I'll give you some real world tips from a coach's perspective to better prepare you. And I hope some of my experienced riders will leave some comments below with tips on what helped them be successful in the basic rider course. So a lot of riders get nervous when they show up to, for the first day of training. And this week on MC Rider, I thought we'd talk to you about some tips and some pointers to help you be more successful and hopefully give you more confidence when you're taking the class. The first tip I have for you is that you can start learning before you even enroll in a class. You can go straight to the MSF's website and download at no cost their Rider's Handbook. The MSF provides that handbook free of charge and you can download it at mcrider.com slash msfbook. I've got a link to that also in the weekly email newsletter that goes out and you can sign up for that newsletter at mcrider.com. That newsletter is a great resource. I've got the weekly video in there, links to some other playlists and things that you may find helpful. So I encourage you to sign up if you've not done so to mcrider.com, sign up for that weekly email newsletter and I'll deliver training right to your inbox each and every week. So that Rider Handbook's a great resource for new and returning riders. It covers all the basics of motorcycle control, road strategies, gear selection, and a ton more. It really is a good resource. So if you're a new rider or you've thought about riding or even experienced riders, particularly people that are getting back on a motorcycle, it's been a long time since you've been on one, you wanna download that guide and learn directly from the MSF and it's got some great tips and techniques to help you be successful. So tip number two, this one sounds kind of odd to a lot of people and that's dust off the bicycle. Many of the tips that you'll learn in the writer's handbook about steering, braking, smoothly, balance, looking where you want to go, all those kind of things can be practiced on a bicycle. So if you've not ridden a bicycle in a while, especially if you've not ridden since you were a kid, it's a huge disadvantage to try to learn to ride a motorcycle if you've not ridden a bicycle for a while. Because one of the biggest fears for new riders is just keeping balance to keep from falling over. And you'd be amazed at how well riding a bicycle can help prepare you for that. And on top of that, you can practice many of the techniques that the MSF is teaching about braking smoothly, looking through corners, all those kind of things. You can practice all that in a low pressure environment on a bicycle. So many people discount the advantage of riding a bicycle it can have on learning, but take my word for it, it will put you ahead of the class if you've been on a bicycle recently. So dust off that bike, spend a couple of weeks riding around the neighborhood before you take the class. It'll help you and you can practice a lot of the things that you're reading about in the writer's handbook. So I've talked about fear being one of the big hindrances to taking the course. And I think that's primarily because of the mental approach that people take about taking the class in the first place. So tip number three is to look at the class as a learning experience. I personally believe that the biggest hurdle that many riders face when taking the class is fear. They come into the process, a bundle of nerves, and for some of them, they're not able to overcome that and it hinders their learning. So the biggest piece of advice I have for you is not looking at the class as pass or fail. Pass or fail puts a lot of pressure on you. Try to look at the class as a learning experience and have fun with it. Understand that it's okay if you don't get your license at the end of this first experience, as long as you learn something and you can carry what you learn to your next experience on a motorcycle. And I know a lot of people who've taken the class multiple times and are eventually successful. And if you have to take the class again, you'll be a better rider the next time you take it. 
So arrive with an open mind and be ready to learn. That takes a whole lot of pressure off. So tip number four deals with motorcycle controls. Many people who take a basic rider course have in their family somebody who already rides. And if that's you and you have access to their motorcycle or somebody else's motorcycle, you can practice many of the skills without ever even having to start the motor. On page four of that rider's handbook that you downloaded, it shows the primary controls of the motorcycle. Now the location of these controls are going to be a little bit different depending on what motorcycle you're on, so refer to the owner's manual of the particular bike you're on if you have any questions. So go out, sit on a motorcycle, and locate all of the primary controls. Primary controls that you're interested in are the handlebars, the throttle, clutch lever, gear shift lever, front brake lever, and the rear brake pedal. Learn how these controls operate and manipulate them while you're sitting on the motorcycle. Call the controls out loud and manipulate that control. So say front brake and reach out with your hand, manipulate that front brake. Do the same thing with all of the other controls. And now a really important tip is manipulate those controls without looking down at them. Reach out and smoothly squeeze in that front brake without looking down. So get your hands on the handlebars, reach out, squeeze in that front brake, smoothly release it, hand back on the grip. Reach out, squeeze in that front brake, smoothly release it, hand back on the grip. First thing a lot of new riders do when they're learning these controls is they look down at them. You want to break that habit early on, and you can do that without ever starting the motorcycle up. Keep those head and eyes up. Act like you're looking down across the parking lot or down the road as you're riding the motorcycle. And as long as you practice this in that safe setting, it's going to help you a whole lot when you get out on the range. Tip number five is practice being smooth with the clutch and the brakes. A lot of new riders need practice to be smooth with the controls of a motorcycle, especially the clutch and the brakes. New riders often release the clutch too quickly and when they're starting out that kills the engine and they squeeze the front brake too abruptly when stopping the motorcycle and it causes the motorcycle to be off balance at a stop. But not you, because you're going to practice all this in the garage before you ever go out riding. So let's talk a little bit about how the clutch works. Remember, the clutch is our left-hand control, so I squeeze in that clutch. When I squeeze in the clutch, I'm removing all the power from the rear wheel, right? So if I've got that clutch squeezed in, even if the motorcycle's in gear, I can rev that engine as much as I want, and that motorcycle's not going to go anywhere because squeezing that clutch in is gonna remove all the power from the rear wheel. If I slowly begin to release that clutch out, so I'm slowly moving my clutch hand out, at some point, I'm gonna get partial power to that rear wheel. It's not gonna just come on all at once. It's not an on-off switch. If I slowly release it out, I'm gonna get partial power to that rear wheel. We call that the friction zone. All right, so you can practice this even without the motorcycle running. You can simulate it. You can squeeze in that clutch, slowly begin releasing that clutch out, and know that at some point when you're actually on the motorcycle with it running in gear, that at some point that's going to start giving power to that rear wheel. So once you're riding the motorcycle, if you continue slowly releasing that clutch out, that's how you get a motorcycle going in the forward direction. And that's how you're smooth in getting that motorcycle going is by being smooth with that clutch. So now that we know how the clutch works, you can practice smoothly releasing the clutch in the garage. Engine's not running, you're just simulating that transfer of power to the rear wheel. Now remember our important tip from earlier, practice doing this without looking down at the clutch. You don't want to look down at the clutch. You want to break that habit early on and look across the range so you're looking, simulating looking across the parking lot and practice doing this several times. Squeeze in the clutch, slowly release that clutch out, hands back on the grip, squeeze in the clutch, slowly release that clutch out, hands back on the grip. Keeping your head and eyes up the entire time, not looking down at that clutch hand. Being smooth with the front brakes is probably even more important skill than being smooth with the clutch, because not being smooth with the clutch can stall a motorcycle, 
Not being smooth with the front brake can result in a crash or a drop. So just like with the clutch, keep your head and eyes up and practice smoothly squeezing that front brake. Then release the brake. All four fingers go back to the grip. Reach out, practice squeezing in that front brake, being nice and smooth with it. Visualize the motorcycle stopping and being smooth with that brake. Practice this, keeping your head and eyes up. Visualize bringing the motorcycle to a smooth, balanced stop. It's amazing how much visualizing will help you once you get out on the range. So you're not just squeezing controls here, you're visualizing actually doing this out on a parking lot and practicing it mentally before you ever get out on the range. You'll learn a lot more in the basic rider class, but if you've practiced these fundamentals before you ever show up for the class, you'll be leaps and bounds ahead of where others will be and where you would have been otherwise had you not practiced this. So when your rider coach asks you how you're doing so well as a new rider, just tell them you learned about it on MC Rider. You might be surprised that a lot of rider coaches already know about this channel and they've been encouraging students to watch this as well. So leave some comments below if you're an experienced rider. I'd love some tips from you to help other new riders be more successful in the class. If you've got any questions, leave a comment here, but the real discussion for this will be taking place over on the forums. You can get access to the forums at mcrider.com support. We'll be discussing this video and a whole lot of other rider tips for new and advanced riders. So join us on the forums. You'll get access to the field guide as well with training exercises that you can work on on any open parking lot. Till next week, guys, this is Ken with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road. There are multiple ways to support the channel. You can become a member on YouTube at mcrider.com slash member or support the channel through Patreon at mcrider.com slash support. Either way, you'll get full access to the forum and the field guides, which will further the training that we release here on a weekly basis.